Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin for today. Today's webinar is featuring Google Classroom and an overview of Google Classroom. And I want to welcome you to today's webinar. I'm Carla Kuiper, and I'm an EBR Instructional Technology Facilitator and a Google for Education Certified Trainer. This webcast is worth one CLU. Please sign in with your name or your email if you're signing in live. I want you to know that this webcast is being recorded. These slides will be shared with everyone. And uh, these slides will be shared by way of our YouTube channel and also by way of the Canvas LMS platform. I want you to know that this webcast is part of an ongoing series of webcasts and webinars that you can catch on our YouTube channel. It's called Webinar Wednesday, and you can see some of the events that will be coming up throughout the end of September and also going into October. I want you to know that you can check, go sign me up for details, sign in links, descriptions, and to check your CLUs for webinars attended. Today's webinar is to explain what Google Classroom is and how it works, to show you how to create a class, to show you how to invite students to your class, to show you how to create and post a question, create and post assignments, and how to create posts with things like text, video, and also hyperlinks. I also want to be able to show you, I will also show you how to find more resources and ways to learn about Google Classroom. So first, let's start with the why. Why move learning online? Google Classroom provides effective communication and it really allows you to give feedback to your students in a much more timely manner. It's a tool that will help you reduce how much you're relying on paper and it's very clean and user-friendly as you'll see. To get the most out of Google Classroom and to get the most out of this webcast, you really need a working Google account. So you need to be using Google Chrome and you need to sign in to Google Chrome and go to the hyperlink that's on the slide that you see, accounts.google.com. In EBR, your EBR email address and email password are your passport to getting into Google Classroom. There are a few ways that you can access Google Classroom if you're having difficulty logging in. You can go to the district's reset password website set up for this school year. It's called pass.ebrschools.org and the link is on the slide. You can also reset your computer login. Just keep in mind that this will also reset your Google, email, jcampus, and also Canvas. Or you can place a help desk request at helpdesk.ebrschools.org. To get the most out of this webcast and out of Google Classroom, you also need a basic knowledge of Google Drive. So to benefit from Google Classroom, you need to be able to access your Google Drive. You need to be able to do things like upload a file from a USB drive to understand that there are files and that you can also have folders in Google Drive and just some basics on how they work. It helps if you can share a Google Drive file and you understand how that process works. And it also helps if you can search Google Drive to find your files. So a working knowledge of Google Drive is really all that you need. And if you have um, additional questions about Google Drive as you look at Google Classroom, I'll show you where you can get some additional training on Google Drive so you can get that background that you might need. I want you to know that in Google Classroom, there are different roles, and this can be confusing when you're getting started.
students and teachers have different roles. Students can join a class. They can create posts, if allowed, by the teacher. They can create NAD files. They can submit assignments. And they can also collaborate on assigned work. On the other hand, teachers have a different role. They can create classes. They can invite students to a class, post announcements, create questions and assignments, and they can also grade and return work to students, mm -hmm. and students don't have that ability. So let's talk about creating a class. Once you're logged in, you'll want to create a So prior to class creation, you have to sign into Google Classroom. An easy way to get started with that is by going to classroom.google.com. You can also go to the right side in Google Chrome and find your application grid. Notice when you mouse over it, it says Google Apps and find the classroom icon. It's really important to keep in mind that the first time you sign in, you need to make sure that you select that you are a teacher. Even if you're in a training and you're planning to join someone else's class, make sure that you select that you're a teacher. If you select that you're a student and you happen to be a teacher, then our district Google admin will have to go in and change your status from student to teacher. And this is going to require a help desk ticket in our in our ticket system. After joining the classroom as a teacher, you can create a new class by clicking on the plus sign to create a new class. So underneath your email address, you'll see where you should have the option to join or create a class. And so you want to select the option to create a class. You'll see a drop down to create a class name in a section, and you want to give your class a specific name just as a best practice. More specific class names are better, especially if you teach multiple classes. So, from the live view, that looks like from your home page, selecting the plus sign, creating a class. and giving your class a name. Notice that you have the option also to add a section and a subject. And again, that has, that's just the best practice, especially if you teach a lot of classes. And it may take a minute. Once your class is created, you go directly to your class's homepage. Notice that your home page has a few things that you should pay attention to right away. First, your class title, your three main tab areas, stream, students, and about, your email address at the top right, and then an area where you can select a theme or even upload a photo. We go to the live site you'll see that um, the areas that I was just talking about, the title, 
your main areas, stream, students, and about. And you'll also notice at the bottom left there's a plus sign and this is where you'll spend a lot of your time as you begin creating your Google Classroom. When you mouse over the plus sign, you'll see that you have the ability to create announcements, assignments, questions, or even to reuse posts. Your Classroom About page is an area where you can set up resources that are considered go-to for your class. You can add class materials, create a class description, describe where the class meet, describe where your class meets, describe where your classes meet, and more. Notice that you have a Drive folder, which is the Google Drive folder automatically created for your Google Classroom. A Classroom Calendar. Your Classroom Calendar, your classroom calendar will be populated with all of the um, assignments once you your, your, classroom, your classroom calendar will be populated with assignments once you begin posting assignments. And you also have a Google calendar for your classroom as well. So Google automatically creates a classroom for your calendar, creates a calendar for your classroom automatically. One last thing on the About page is that you can invite other teachers to join in. Keep in mind when you invite other teachers, teachers that you add to the class can do everything that you can except delete the class. So you can type in a teacher's email in our domain and hit the Invite button. The teacher that you invite will receive an email invitation to join your classroom. They can accept or decline the invitation that you send them. And inviting other teachers is a best practice if you teach in an inclusion setting or in a collaborative setting, as well as um, in situations where you may want to have additional teachers join in to help you grade certain projects or um, work with certain students. The Students tab is how you get students into the classroom in our district. In our district, email is not turned on for students, so you have to share the class code with students. Keep in mind that students have to go to this URL, classroom.google.com, to log in, or they have to be using the app on the Chromebook, and they need to log in with their computer, username, and password. Even though email is not turned on, they do need to add the at ebrschools.org at the end. Once students, are, once students locate the classroom.google.com URL, they can join your classroom by signing in and then entering the classroom code. The classroom code is displayed here on the left side, and most teachers will write it on the board, or you can even display it simply by selecting the drop-down next to the class code. Only students with this code can join your class. And at any time, you can either reset the code, disable it, or even make a copy of it. Underneath the class code, you'll see an area where you can control the classroom communication stream. You can allow students to post things in Google Classroom 
and to comment. You can give them rights only to comment or you can keep and reserve the right as the teachers to post and do all the posting and commenting yourself. Many times teachers will gradually open up the communication in Google Classroom. Just keep in mind that the default is that students can post and comment. You have to go in and change it so that you would be the only person able to post and comment. Going back to the stream, which is where you'll create assignments, announcements, and questions. I'm going to go to the plus sign at the bottom. And look, let's look at how to create an assignment. Create an assignment when you have something that you want students, when you create an assignment, when you have something that you want to send to students, have them work on, and return back to you. Google Classroom allows you to post work for students that they can access at any time, 24 seven, anywhere they can log into the internet, work, and then return the work back to you. So I'm going to select create an assignment. Give the assignment a title. instructions and it's a best practice to include instructions because keep in mind that students who are absent will need to come in and get the directions select a due date and you can even create topics Notice when, I, notice when creating assignments, I can assign assignments to all students. Um, and I can also exercise the option to give an assignment only to one or two students. I can add materials from a variety of locations. I can add them from my computer, my Google Drive. I also have the option to add a YouTube video. Notice when I add a Google Doc or a file for my Google Drive, I have the option to allow students to view the file, to edit the file if I want them to do some work. Keep in mind that when they keep in mind that when I select this option, it means that they can edit the file collaboratively. Or I can make a copy for each student when I want them to work individually. I also have the option to add a YouTube video to this assignment. And I can even add hyperlinks. Notice that Google Classroom is always saving the assignment as I edit it. Once I've created my assignment, I have the option to go ahead and assign it to students. I can schedule it for a date in the future. Or I can save it as a draft if I want to come back and edit this assignment later. So I'll go ahead and hit assign. And 
in a few moments, you'll be able to see where my assignment is posted in my classroom. For, this means that students can access it anytime and anywhere that they log into Google Classroom. If at some point later I need to come in and make changes to this assignment, I can go to the three dots at the top right and edit the assignment and make any changes. I also have the option to delete the assignment later on. The next type of post that you can create in Google Classroom is an announcement. Announcements are good when you have information that you want students to know, but you don't necessarily need them to respond or to turn anything in. So I can type in a message Notice I still have the option to add a video, a hyperlink, a file from Google Drive, or an attachment from my computer, and hit post. Notice that the most recent post created in Google Classroom is always on top. You can change that. Once you create a few posts, Go to the three dots on any post and you'll notice that you do have the option to move a post to the top at any point. The last kind of post that you can create in Google Classroom is a question. And it's great to create questions when you want to check for understanding or as a quick formative assessment. Questions can have a due date assigned because we do want students to respond and you can also set up a time option as well. I want you to notice that questions can be set to be short answer or as multiple choice and you have the option to turn on whether or not you want students to reply to each other or to edit their answers. Once a question is set up, you can ask it, and you also have the drop-down to schedule it for later or save it as a draft if you'd like to add more to it later on. In this webinar, you just learned how to access Google Classroom, how to create a classroom, how to create assignments, questions, and also announcements. If you would like to learn more, keep in mind that this webcast was designed just to give you enough information for you to get going. If you'd like to learn more, we have a few additional resources that linked to today's presentation that can really help you. The first one is our Canvas course, Getting Started with Google Classroom. And this course will take you through everything from how to access Google Classroom, how to add students, student management, managing online assignments, collaboration, and much, much more in Google Classroom.
You can also visit the Google for Education Training Center. There's a brief online module that contains enough information about Google Classroom to get you started. This online module is part of the Google Certified Educator program, so you want to sign in with your district account and complete the module because it will count towards your Google Certified Educator modules. Another resource available is our Google Classroom Help YouTube Playlist. And at the moment it contains at the moment it contains 16 different videos about all the different skills and concepts in Google Classroom. You can um, access these through our YouTube channel. And the link is also contained on the slide. And there are also many excellent websites out, out there as well. And I've got one of them that I wanted to feature, Vicki Davis, Cool Cat Teacher. And she's got a wonderful page, 100 plus great Google Classroom resources. I want to mention one more time before wrapping up for today that this brief, this brief webcast is part of a series. Next week, I'll be talking about how to conquer Google Chrome, Classroom best practices, and then also ELA tools for Google Classroom as well. This webinar is part of a series. Next week, I'll be talking about how to conquer Google Chrome. One-to-one -one classroom best practices, ELA tools for the Google Classroom, and then blended learning using Google Classroom. So thanks for joining in and hope to see you again next week.